Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all very much for being here today. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to enter for the record a uh, piece by uh, Tom Jocelyn and Bill Roggio, the costs of withdrawal from Afghanistan. From Without objection, so ordered. Also, al-Qaeda continues to view Afghanistan as a safe haven by the same authors from the Long War Journal. And a third piece uh, by Ambassador Ryan Crocker, I was ambassador to Afghanistan, and this deal is a surrender. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you very much. Um, General Votel, uh, I appreciate your determination and, and your, your uh, commitment in your testimony and today to talking about how important it is that we be guided by conditions on the ground. Um, but I have to say, when I look at the situation in Afghanistan and the policy that I'm afraid we're pursuing now here, it looks like we're aggressively setting those conditions aside, aggressively ignoring the conditions on the ground. Uh, in particular, the uh, discussions that are underway that, that both you and Assistant Secretary Will Barger have referenced that uh, Ambassador Khalil Azad is leading. I think you mentioned them as a path to progress, and then Assistant Secretary Will Barger said that they were uh, going in a positive direction. Uh, we seem to be pursuing the same fantasy that we did in the Obama administration, which is that Al Qaeda is somehow distinct from the Taliban. Uh, when I look at what's happened, when I look at the fact that uh, Ayman Zawahiri, the leader of Al Qaeda, has sworn an oath of allegiance uh, to the Taliban, uh, more recently, uh, Ayman Zawahiri, the same leader of al-Qaeda, claimed that the Taliban's uh, resurrected Islamic emirate of Afghanistan would be, quote, the nucleus of a new caliphate. Um, so when I look at the situation there and I look at the extent to which we are dealing with the very entity that attacked us on 9-11, uh, none of us want what the president has called endless wars. However, it would be far worse if we handed a victory to our jihadist enemies. Uh, and it would be, God forbid, far worse if we had another mass casualty attack in the United States. So I wonder, General Votel, if you could point me to anything um, that the Taliban has said or done to either renounce violence, uh, to abandon their alliance with Al Qaeda, or to say that they'll abide by the Constitution of Afghanistan uh, that, that should give us any hope that these talks are anything but a fantasy. Well, they haven't made any of those statements, uh, Congresswoman, as, as, as you know. Uh, but, uh, but again, as, as I've uh, tried to uh, cover in my, in my opening statement here, this is, we are very early in the process of this. There have been no agreements from either side. We have not given anything up, and they have not given so anything General, up. So, General, is there anything you see that gives you confidence that it would be your best military advice that we could, in fact, negotiate any kind of agreement that you could count on the Taliban to uphold? I think the fact that we are actually having discussions is a is a is a point that we have not reached in the 18 years we've been involved in this. No, well, this General, conflict. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we actually did have discussions uh, that, that during the Obama administration, Secretary Clinton initially set these conditions and then uh, completely abandoned them. And you know, I don't have to tell you the history when we released uh, the prisoners from Guantanamo in exchange for Bergdahl. So we've gone down this path before. But but my concern is. Um, even if, let's say for the sake of argument, that you believe that those negotiations could lead someplace, that we could in fact be doing the best uh, we could for our national security by talking to the Taliban who are inextricably linked with Al-Qaeda, the organization that, affect us, that attacked us on 9-11, um, would it be your best military advice that withdrawing forces in the middle of that uh, would in fact help to increase our credibility? Uh, Congresswoman, we have we we have remained uh, very focused on the on the terrorism and counterterrorism mission that but we have. But specifically, the withdrawal. And we of could with, we could withdraw forces and not have an impact on our counterterrorism mission. That's right. But but against, General, uh, if Al Qaeda the, or any other groups. Thank there. you, General. But you mentioned making sure that we had the maximum military pressure on the Taliban and on Al Qaeda. And I fail to understand how it could be the situation that announcing withdrawal of forces is maintaining the maximum military pressure. An additional question would be, how is it conceivably possible that a negotiation that actively leaves out the very government that we say we're trying to help to encourage and sustain would lead us in the right direction? It is not leaving out the government. Ambassador Khalzad is well engaged with the government but, of but the government, But the Taliban continues to refuse to talk to the government and of And this is the purpose of the, of the framework discussions that are underway right now, Congressman, well, to get to that point. Thank you, General. I remain... I remain uh, very concerned that we are headed down a, an extremely dangerous path. We'll continue this in the classified setting, but this would be, were we to leave, a jihadist victory 
for the very forces that attacked us on 9-11. And while we've got to ensure that we're engaged in countering the great power conflict and the threats we face, we cannot go down the path of ignoring uh, the fact that, that these were the folks that provided safe haven to al-Qaeda for the attacks on 9-11. Thank you.